Ukrainian forces always aim to destroy as much Russian military equipment as possible. But it's crucial to do it at the right moment, namely when it's loaded with ammunition. Then any hit results in the complete destruction of the vehicle. Take a look at this video for example. This is the Stontsepek flamethrower system, the most fearsome type of Russian multiple rocket launcher systems. But within a few seconds, this weapon will be destroyed thanks to its own ammunition. Sonstepek fires vacuum reactive projectiles, which are very dangerous for infantry. That's why Ukrainians are particularly eager to hunt down this weapon. In this case, Ukrainian forces will use an FPV drone as a means of attack, but it's crucial to do so before the MLRS launches its projectiles. Typically, the vehicle is fully loaded and then moves to its firing position to launch the entire package of rocket projectiles. This is the perfect moment to strike with an FPV drone. A kamikaze drone leads to the detonation of the entire projectile package, causing the entire vehicle to explode like fireworks. It's quite a spectacular scene. This explosion occurs precisely because the vehicle was fully loaded with ammunition. It's like hitting an ammunition depot. Here's another similar case. The Soltensepec MLRS was detected and hit with a high Mars missile before it could launch its rockets. You can see the result for yourself. In reality, Russian weaponry was self-destructed due to its own ammunition. By the way, the Ukrainian army now has similar flamethrower systems in its arsenal. They were captured from the Russians as trophies and are now used on the front lines. Using FPV drones, you can also destroy self-propelled howitzers filled with ammunition before they are expended, following the same principle. Take a look at this concealed Russian self-propelled mortar called Nona. It was loaded with its own projectiles from the start. Nona was hit by a kamikaze drone and immediately caught fire. And just a minute later, it exploded and shattered into pieces. Here's the most interesting example. Ukrainian intelligence spotted two Russian UR-77 mine-clearing vehicles among the trees. Their coordinates were relayed to the HIMARS team, which targeted the objective with just one missile. The HIMARS missile deviated slightly from the target, likely due to the interference of Russian electronic warfare systems. However, this was still sufficient to set the targets ablaze, followed by a spectacular explosion. Take a look at the result. The explosion was of such magnitude that nothing remained of the vehicles, except for charred dark spots. All of this happened because the equipment was loaded with a full complement of ammunition. I'll remind you that a demining vehicle of this type contains a large amount of explosives, which it uses during its operation. Last summer, a similar piece of equipment was abandoned by the Russians during their unsuccessful counteroffensive. The vehicle was fully loaded with ammunition, which amounts to 750 kilograms of explosives. Ukrainian soldiers destroyed it, and look at the result. There's absolutely nothing left of that vehicle. It's definitely beyond repair. This UR-77 was also abandoned by the Russians. Look, Ukrainians threw a grenade at it, but nothing happened because the grenade landed on the upper hole of the vehicle. However, the second grenade hit the armored vehicle's hatch directly, leading to the detonation of all the explosives. Allow me to draw the conclusion that nothing would have happened to this machine if it had been without ammunition. This is clearly illustrated by the following example. If a grenade lands in an empty armored transporter, nothing will happen to it because it's empty. It's just like an empty can. But this armored transporter is full of ammunition that it delivers to Russian soldiers at the front lines. A Ukrainian kamikaze drone hit it, and look what happened. A fireball. And now, let's look at examples involving tanks. We've seen many cases where Russian tanks were attacked by FPV drones, but nothing happened to them. At most, there's some smoke. But even if the tank's interior lining burns, it can still be repaired or its parts can be used for other tanks. 
and the Russians do just that. But if you hit a tank when it's fully loaded with ammunition, there's likely to be nothing left of the tank. Russian tanks can be destroyed in various ways, with the favorite among Ukrainians being the Javelin anti-tank missile. Typically, when a Javelin missile hits a tank with ammunition, it causes the tank's turret to fly into the air, and the tank turns into a fireball. Here's the most modern Russian tank, carrying 42 rounds. It was hit by an anti-tank missile, leading to an immediate detonation and complete destruction of the tank. Sometimes, a tank doesn't explode if it has very little ammunition left. In such cases, there's another method involving a combination of two types of drones. The first FPV drone damages the tank, causing the crew to hastily abandon it. The second drone drops a grenade inside the tank, leading to a fire erupting within the tank. And after some time, it also results in the detonation of the remaining ammunition and the complete destruction of the tank. However, sometimes an FPV drone strike can immediately lead to the detonation of the ammunition and the tank's explosion, as we can see in this video. Or in this video, we see how a kamikaze drone triggers a detonation on its first attempt, causing the explosion of an ammunition-laden armor transporter. Obviously, the more ammunition there is in a vehicle, the faster it can lead to an explosion. Of course, many Russian tanks finish themselves by running over mines. This is a common practice among the Russians. But what I love the most is when the American HIMARS MLRS destroys Russian multiple rocket launch systems. American weaponry boasts incredible precision thanks to GPS coordination, so the Ukrainian army successfully employs it in the battle against all types of Russian artillery and usually emerges victorious. Russians have never won a counter-battery battle against HIMARS. Russian MLRS systems take a long time to reload making them easy to detect and target. The Grad BM is the most mass-produced Russian MLRS. It is designed for use on the front line and has a relatively short firing range of only 15 to 20 kilometers. This means that these vehicles have to get very close to the front line to launch their projectiles. As a result, these machines are most vulnerable to HIMARS rockets. Well, my friends, if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and leave your comments. It would be a great support for me.